for most British Columbians, as we all know, the last few months have been a time of profound change. COVID-19 has disrupted all the routines, everything from heading in the office at the start of the day to being able to visit our loved ones. The pandemic has changed the way we do business, with many restaurants and shops only now opening up. And the pandemic, as everyone knows, also delayed the spring session by closing the legislature. While COVID-19 put many aspects of our daily life on pause, it didn't take away some of the existing challenges that are being faced in our province, including those being faced by strata owners. Throughout BC, too many people have seen the cost of strata insurance skyrocket. In late 2019, we began to hear examples of significant shifts in the strata insurance market that went well beyond any kind of normal market corrections. In response, I directed the Financial Services Authority to examine the issue in depth. Last week, the BCFSA provided their interim report to government. The report showed that premiums have risen by approximately 40% across the province. It also confirmed that this is an incredibly complex situation with provincial and global factors contributing to the costs. And that includes everything from rising property values to earthquake risk. While the report confirms the reasons behind the increased prices are complicated, it's in fact very clear that the results are not. The current situation is unacceptable and there is no quick fix for this problem. But as the Financial Services Authority says in their interim report, we all have a role to play in returning the strata market, the insurance market, back to balance. And that's what our government is intending to do. Today, we tabled legislation to amend the Strata Property Act and the Financial Institutions Act. This legislation will bring more transparency to the strata insurance market and help strata councils and owners cope with the current situation. Minister Robinson is going to provide more details on the legislation, but briefly just touching on the finance pieces, one of the steps we are taking is to prohibit referral fees. This means that insurers and insurance brokers will no longer be able to offer referral fees as an incentive to a strata property manager. The benefits are twofold. First, this will give strata councils more confidence that the choice of their insurer or their broker has not been swayed by referral fees. And second, the referral fee comes out of the commission that an insurance broker makes. And so with referral fees ending, we certainly strongly encourage brokers to pass those cost savings on to strata corporations. As I've said, this is a complex problem without a simple solution. But today's legislation is a step forward in tackling this problem. It also paves the way for us to bring in additional regulatory measures. Measures again that are going to improve financial transparency by requiring brokers to disclose their commissions on a strata property. We're also strengthening notification requirements about changes to insurance costs and insurance coverage or an intent by a company not to renew. This again is going to help strata corporations get the notice they deserve and need to plan ahead. Additionally, the BC Financial Services Authority is going to continue their work over the summer with a further report expected in the fall. And with that, I'll turn it over to Minister Robinson to provide details on the other piece of the legislation. Thank you, Carol, and good afternoon, everyone. I, I would also like to acknowledge that I'm speaking uh, with all of you from the traditional territory of the Kwangan speaking peoples and the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. We do absolutely understand the difficulty that people living in stratas are facing when dealing with significant increases in insurance costs or in some cases not being able to find insurance at all. And we know that this is placing people in difficult circumstances and risking their ability to keep their home or to maintain it. This is an issue that has been growing for a number of months and it's one that is being felt in communities across the province and in fact around the world. 
As, as mentioned by both Minister James and the uh, BC Financial Services Authority last week, this is an extremely complex issue with a number of national and global factors affecting cost and availability of insurance. This is a problem that has been identified by many organizations, including groups from the insurance industry, the strata owners associations, the official opposition, and many strata owners who have been reaching out to us on their own. As the FSA pointed out last week, there is a role for everyone involved to getting to a solution, and that includes government. While there is no quick fix to this problem, this legislation is a first step in government doing its part to tackle a challenging problem facing many British Columbians. The amendments we have tabled today to the Strata Property Act and Financial Institutions Act will not only help bring more transparency to the strata insurance market, but they will give strata councils and owners additional tools to cope with the challenges that they are facing today. This legislation will also provide a roadmap for future measures that will help manage these significant increases and undo some of the damage caused by some decisions made by previous governments. In addition to action on items like referral fees and broker commissions, as described by my colleague, these amendments to the Strata Property Act will give clear guidelines for what strata corporations are required to do in a number of other situations. For example, they will require strata corporations to inform people about any changes to insurance coverage in advance, such as increases in deductibles, so owners can make informed decisions about their own coverage and financial planning. Today, owners may only find out about these decisions um, that are made by strata managers or councils and have little notice for these increased fees. The amendments also make it clear that stratas are authorized to use their contingency reserve fund to pay for any unexpected, unbudgeted and imminent premium increase to limit the need to rely on assessments or risk gaps in insurance coverage. And these changes will protect strata unit owners against large lawsuits from strata corporations if the owner was legally responsible for a loss or damage, but through no fault of their own. As Carol said earlier, we know there isn't a simple solution to solving the challenges facing BC strata insurance market. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't take the steps that we can, and that's what we're doing today. Beyond the legislation itself, a number of regulatory changes will be made to further address this situation in consultation with the sectors. One example of the things we will be working toward through regulatory changes will be strengthening depreciation reporting to help stratas better plan for, the fut for future maintenance and set aside funds for con contingency planning. Unfortunately, when depreciation reports were put in place by the previous government, they chose to leave a loophole that allowed strata corporations to avoid doing to avoid doing these uh, depreciation reports. This created risk for owners and increased the risk of claims from unaddressed repair needs, which drives up the costs of insurance. Unfortunately, many strata owners today are paying the price for this mistake. There is more work that will happen over the coming months. And with continued input from key stakeholders, we know, and, and, and we know that the FSA will continue their work as well identifying the changes that are needed for all the different groups out there. Because we know it will take all of us working together to help lower strata insurance costs for people. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tony Gioventu, the Executive Director of the Condominium Homeowners Association of BC. Unfortunately, Tony is only available by phone as he is isolating, but I'm pleased to have him here with us uh, virtually today. Through his work, Tony is well aware of the challenges the rising cost of strata insurance is creating for people. And he has been a key voice in raising this issue with government and identifying the need for some of the actions that we are taking today. Tony?
changes and the transformation that will be enabled by the legislation um, that will look at other conditions such as unit descriptions of buildings um, where there are standards that are set for more predictability for the insurers without the high cost of high-end finishings or the cost of finishings in units, the ability to look at better long-term planning and funding for resources. All of these initiatives are certainly going to make a difference as we progress. Um, as the Minister has said, there is no quick fix. It is a free market industry. Everyone acknowledges that. But we do have conditions within our legislation and within our industries that are regulated in the province that can be changed and will certainly help to influence the outcomes. And thank you again to government for taking such a strong level of interest and support. Um, and certainly we will see, I would suspect, a high level of public consultation um, with all of the partners in the industry as we move forward. Once again, thank you very much, Minister James and Minister Robinson, for your support.